I think I got it. Let's try that again, shall we? And pull. Hey YouTubers and how are we today? Hope you're doing great because I'm doing great as well and um, we're filming today inside uh, because a lot of people are complaining about uh, the noise outside, the traffic noise, the wildlife noise etc. So um, I'm probably going to start doing the reviews inside unless obviously we're shooting. So today we've got uh, a new rifle and uh, yeah it's a beast, it's a beast, it's packed full of features and this is the Hatson Glacian to carbine and this is the carbine version now there are many variants of this rifle they're all pretty much the same but uh, I will put some pictures um, I'll just move over a bit I'll put some pictures down on this side here but basically you can get the Glacian 1 2 which are the wooden stock versions and then you can get the 3 and the 4 which are the tactical versions with the plastic stock on them um, the differences between one and the twos are that they have um, holes in the butt area here so it's slightly different around this area here on there and you can also then get them in sub variants of carbine which this is and the carbines have basically a shrouded barrel and it's a shorter barrel on them as well and you can um, get them in 177 you can get them in 22 and in 25 and of course you get all your variants of FAC depending on where you get it from which country and what licenses you've got on there now one other thing to notice about these as well is that if you get them in the non carbine version which this one is a carbine then you also will get them with optical sights which is quite unusual for a PCP rifle and this is unregulated rifle as well so there's no regulator in these um, so that's quite interesting and there's a couple of videos out there uh, where people are shooting them with the optical sights on them as well um, but if you get it in the carbine you do not get that functionality you do not get the optical sights of it and they're designed to put a scope tray on them so Turkish company Hatsan yep are well known for their shotguns and um, you can certainly see it with this thing um, it's not light this thing is actually quite heavy so I've got a little bit of paper here and I'm just going to go through a couple of specs so this is the carbine one but the specs are pretty much the same and I've weighed this without the scope on as well and it does different to the advertised weights um, so the weight of this rifle unscoped is uh, 4.1 kilograms and that is quite heavy that is nine pounds unscoped. You put a scope on it and we're looking at nine and a half plus pounds there. And it is a proper beast of a rifle. Solid, it is solid. Absolutely solid on there. And from the butt down to the barrel, the overall length of the carbine version that I have here is 43 inches. And you can certainly feel that weight. Um, you can feel that weight on the front end there. Um, it is quite tiring on your arms it's not a rifle to be walking around the field with and sort of plinking around with especially if you're you know you're a slightish guy like me I'm five foot seven you know and I'm, I'm not got muscles all over me and this is a heavy rifle to fire on there but um, overall looking at it it's a beautiful beautiful um, look and finish on it and I'm quite impressed with it the overall build quality of it so um, another one as well is the barrel on here, um, the carbine is obviously a shorter barrel and it's um, all within the shroud here and the barrel on this one is uh, on this one is just under 18 inches long, obviously the uh, non-carbine rifles are slightly longer. The air cylinders apparently are removable as well, I've read, um, but I'm not going to take the air cylinder out of this one because it's been loaned to me and thank you again to Mike up in the Northwest who's lent me this rifle. Now, the major thing with this rifle is for a relatively cheap price, um, and I will put the prices up as well and I'll put some, sites up, some info down the side here of the weights and the prices, but for a relatively cheap price you get a lot of rifle here a hell of a lot of rifle. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go through some of the basic characteristics of this rifle just so you can see. 
Um, first off, it comes in a hard case. Um, and again, I'm going to leave some pictures down the side of here, that's why I'm sitting just to one side. But it comes in a hard case, you get a sling with it, um, you get two magazines with it, you get a easy decharge for the for degassing your actual uh, degassing your air cylinder as well, attachment with it, um, and manual, and a few other little bits in there as well, um, some seals, and so you get a lot in the case uh, with the rifle as well. But uh, let's also then go around and look at the rifle itself. We have an adjustable backst uh, backstop here. Uh, butt plate, um, and I've moved it up for me on here. We have a fully adjustable cheat guard as well that can you lift up and down through these two simple screws. That's just an Allen key, and these are just two simple screws on here. Under here, we have additional magazine storage for one magazine. Now, the rifle comes with two, and there's a nice little bit here. It just slots in beautifully in there for a magazine in there. Beautiful. We've got some nice checkering on the actual rifle here, we can see the checkering around here. But I do find this is quite a long reach for me. Um, like I said, I've not got the biggest hands, but it is a long, long reach in to get into that trigger in there. Now the trigger itself is fully adjustable. Um, there's a couple of screws in here that allow you to change that trigger. Um, it's gold plated, but I'm not 100% sure if that's metal doesn't really feel like it. I, I'm going to assume it is, but it's certainly gold plated. And some people have reported some of the uh, the golding coming off on these after time on there. But we have a safety catch in here as well. So we'll just make that up. There's a safety catch, so it's just push forward and push back. Um, it's fully resettable and it's not automatic on this rifle. And then we can see the beautiful metal cast in here around the breech area. Um, absolutely beautiful. And we have the bolt action here. So if we can pull back, it's nice side lever bolt action pull back. This rifle is uh, has a magazine in it but it's totally empty. I've fired it off a couple of times just to make sure and it is quite loud. Quite loud on that as you can see. And then if we move forward, so let's pull back here, we have this little lever which we push forward allows you to take the magazine out and put the magazine in and pull it across. And that's how the magazine system works on there. And my arm's aching holding onto this rifle. Ooh, it is heavy. Um, so obviously once it's there, then we can fire the shot off. We can cycle the magazine around and fire the shot off again. Uh, 14 shot magazine, and we'll go a little bit deeper into the magazine as well later on. So that's just moving down the rifle here. Now, an interesting feature with the rifle. Oh, oh that, that, that's bad. That was aching my arm. The interesting feature about the rifle, and we just about make out here, hopefully, is we actually have two sets of rails, which is quite interesting, quite near, nice. Um, the top one is an 11mm dovetail, and then we have a 22mm dovetail outside, so you can fit two size scope mounts onto here, and that's quite a good feature, actually. And the features carry on with this rifle. If we actually come and take a look at the back end here, when I cock the rifle, we can see that we have a little red, I'm just about to make that out there, a little red indicator, and that tells us that the rifle has been cocked. So just by looking down there, and we can see the little red indicator in there, and just see that, we know the rifle is cocked and therefore is live. So, nice little feature in there. It also, and yes, the features are still going on, features anti-double load. It's got a mechanism in here that when you're cocking the rifle with a pellet in the chamber, you cannot cock it a second time to push a second pellet in. Very, very cool and very, very nice. Um, and it's something I wish quite a lot of rifles would do because if even the most experienced of us out there do struggle at times and we do sometimes put two pellets up the chamber, which isn't good at all. Um, we have slings, a front, uh, back and front as well. Um, the only problem with this sling here is the attachment on it is that uh, uh, you might not be able to fit on your standard Harris or other type of bipods that go onto your standard sling on there. Um, you might have to take this apart to do that and again I'm not going to do that but this rifle could really probably do with a bipod on it but uh, we'll come more onto the actual shooting of the rifle itself later on. Then of course we have the barrel which is a full floating barrel as we can see across there um, and as we said that's just a shade under 18 inches and I've got this in 2.2 um, and we've heard the muzzle report on it 
it is quite loud and there's quite a twang to that when you're pulling it and then we have the air cylinder underneath with a fill gauge on the front and you're looking at a max fill here of 200 uh, bar on that and your shot counts when I take it down to about 80 then I'm getting about 75 to 85 shots before you start getting a drop off so it's not a huge shot count on here as well uh, to fill the rifle we have a fill port here so if we can just twist it around and you can see through there and then it comes with a standard attachment that you just plug into there um, with your quick fill and then when you're done you just twist it back again um, and it's quite a quick fill on this rifle as well so what else we've got let's spin it around the other side we have some beautiful beautiful engraving in there with the Hatsan uh, information on it and patent pending and the fill pressures and everything so this rifle is fitted with a uh, standard 3 to 12 hawk scope on here and it fits this rifle quite well my arm is aching with this, okay. Right, so um, a lot of people, sort of, hat sands, they have a semi-good reputation, maybe a bit of snobbery going on about them. Um, I'm not, you know, 100% sure they've had some reliability issues with this, but the build quality on this rifle does look extremely good. Um, I like this walnut effect on it. It's very, very nicely done to a very, very high standard. The actual metal work on it, the mechanisms on it are absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a gorgeous, gorgeous rifle to to uh, to look at when you first open the box on the range and people have a look and go, "What's that?" And yeah, it's it's different and it's new. And for the price point, you get a lot of features for the price point with this rifle. So what we're going to do is we're going to head out outside um, we're going to stick it down on the garden range at 25 meters and we're going to see what it's like and how it performs um, I'm hoping for good things with this it feels great um, a bit heavy like I said um, but hopefully it's going to shoot well um, I'm not 100% sure because of you know I'm just going to do this again and just listen carefully and it's there's a good twang going on there and I can feel something you know with PCPs I'm used to PCPs when you fire the PCP to find out that it's just like totally recoilless whereas this seems to have movement in it if I just yeah it just doesn't the, we'll see how we'll get on when we shoot with it and we'll, we'll take it outside and uh, we'll come back and we'll have some summaries with it Just starting to spit down with rain here. How did I get on with the glacier? Hatson. This is typical of what I was getting before. All over the place, and that's that's movement of the barrel and everything when I'm firing. I'm still getting used to it. But I persisted, I persisted. And I really sort of like I deserve to give this rifle some justice. Uh, so I really got myself really comfortable, made sure the rifle was perfectly lined up between the cushions, the front and the rear rest. I had it there. I was hardly touching the rifle, proper artillery holding it. You know, hardly touching it, just literally just holding it and holding the trigger. And the trigger on it is so hard on it. It is literally, 
I've adjusted it as much as I can and I got it so it's just a little bit of first stage and then it's still quite a tug to get the second stage but I've sort of like got into the rhythm of it and it's you know I can't adjust it anymore the trigger on it is it's horrible it's horrible but I persisted that's what I managed to do and that's 14 shots so it is capable of hitting straight pellet on pellets or getting yourself a decent group. You know, it's a five penny piece, this main group up here. It is possible to do it, but I'll tell you what, it is not easy to do. Um, now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people out there who are going to comment and say, Steve, you're a crap shot. Yes, I am a crap shot. But you've seen my other videos, you've seen the other rifles that I've had out there and I can pop, you know, pellet within pellet area, you know, within five penny pieces at, at, five, at uh, 25 meters. I'm not joking, that took me took me over 200 pellets to be able to do that. Everything was like that otherwise, all over the place. And I really, really struggled with this. For a beginner, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And they're also getting a lot of jams as well, the magazines on, on it as well. And I will cut out and I'll, when we're back indoors, I'll show you the problems with the magazine. It's, it's horrible, it's horrible, it's horrible. But uh, that's enough now. We are cut back inside where it's nice and warm and we'll have our final conclusions. So, welcome back in again after we've had a play with the Hatsan. And uh, yeah, I struggled with this rifle. I struggled with this rifle. So, anyway, I thought we'd take it outside and we'll do a one more test with this. So, uh, we'll be back after this test. Well, there's one thing that we haven't done with this rifle yet, and this is going to be a new test for the channel. I think this is quite a unique test, and I think Hatsan will be very proud of me. So, let's get ready for this new test. You ready? And pull! I think I got it. Let's try that again, shall we? And pull! Okay, so we're back inside and uh, yeah, I did take a bit of a mickey taking as well with that last bit, you know, shotguns, hat stand, but uh, to be honest, that is what I feel about this rifle. You know, you take it into the range, you'd be accused of bringing an over and under shotgun into the range. Um, it's heavy, it's big, and it's got some annoying, annoying habits. Yes, it's packed full of features, and I would love this rifle if it didn't have these annoying features. Number one is the magazine loading system with it. The magazine, pull back, pull this lever forward, slot your magazine in, pull the lever down, cock it, and then you're ready to go and fire. Not a problem with that. The problem is the actual magazines and getting the pellets in the magazines. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut to a bit of B-roll I've done to show you the problems I found with the magazine and how to cure them. Once you know how to do it, yeah, it's not too bad. Right, I've had a lot of problems with this magazine, so I just wanted to bring this to the table to show you a little bit more. And I'm not the only one. Lots of people are reporting this. The magazine system itself is fairly simple. It's got a couple of O-rings that we can see down the side here that hold the pellets in place and you feed the magazine the pellets just directly into the magazine. So I'm just going to drop two or three in here and I'm not going to push them home at this stage. Uh, we'll just drop three of them in here like so. Now, the problem with this magazine is that these pellets need to be pushed into the magazine but not so far as to protrude out of the back end. If you don't, when you cycle the magazine, it has a danger of ripping the skirts and deforming the pellets. And if you push them too far in, it also then has a danger of ripping the front of the pellets as well. The temptation is to use your finger or a fingernail to push these in, but then you're going to deform the skirts again with the pellets. And this has happened to me a lot of the times. So the way, the most simplest way I found of doing this is to hold the magazine flat on a flat surface, get a golf tee or something similar, and just push the pellets through until you feel them click into place in the O-seal, O-ring seals. Because I've got it flat down, there is no way now that they can push out the back. You get that wrong and you'll get lots of problems and I've had lots of problems with this magazine system until I worked out a better way of doing it. Now initially I was trying to put the pellets in and then I was trying to use my finger to push it in and because it's quite a tight fit, all I was doing, as we just see, I can see this here, but I've deformed the skirt slightly with my fingernail to do that. Then I was holding, putting the pallet in like so, and then I was holding it up, and then I was trying to push it in, and I was over pushing it so it came out. So when the magazine cycled, it caused me a whole load of problems on that side of the pallet as well. 
So okay, you can see there with the magazine, and that's what causes a lot of people a lot of problems with bad cycling and damaged pellets. And I certainly got that. I put about 200 odd shots through this rifle, and I've done it about six or seven times because of that. And it is annoying, and it's I don't like that design. It just doesn't seem to work. It makes you want to dent the pellets or deform the pellets. And the best way i found is with a pen or with a golf tee, as you saw. Another major problem with this rifle is the trigger. I, maybe it's me, but I cannot get on with this trigger at all. I find it extremely heavy, very heavy. I've tried adjusting the first and the second stages on here, and it's made it slightly better for me, just slightly better for me. But I find that I can get the first stage just right, and I can feel the first stage, and then the second stage is gone. second stage just gets me. And you've got to put that pressure on it, but it's getting that right pressure and it just doesn't feel like lots of rifles for example I've recently played with uh, the new Cricket, I've played with the new, uh, I've played with uh, an old uh, um, Fiomium um, MFR, those triggers on them are sublime, you hold the trigger, you fill the first stage you keep coming, same pressure, bang the second stage goes this one, first stage, take up the first stage then you've got to put more pressure on and then it goes on you and I've tried and tried and tried to play with this, but it just feels stupidly heavy to me, this trigger. And I also struggle to reach and get my finger around the trigger through the long stock on it here. I just, it just doesn't, so I feel like I'm almost reaching with the, the tip of my finger, getting the first stage, and then the second stage goes on me. And maybe, maybe, maybe if I played a bit more with it, but it just didn't suit me at all on there. And then that brings me on to the next part of the rifle as well, is that I'm going to do is just lean the rifle down here, and obviously the rifle's nice and safe. Now I have had lots of shots through this rifle at 25 meters, um, and these are the sorts of results I'm getting. They're not great. Take a look; they're all over the place. Um, here's another one, and this was typical. And I'm trying to work out what is wrong. I'm not a great shot, but I'm not that bad a shot. What is it that's wrong with this? I was holding the same way I do with my PCPs. My caliber of cricket, bang, 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 pellet, pellet, pellet within a five pence piece. Easy over 25 meters for somebody like me. The Air Arms S410 I did, same. Even the older PH6, Diab um, PH6 Daystoke that I've got there, same, no problems. This, absolutely no chance. What on earth was going wrong with it? I was taking my time, I tried working it all out, I couldn't work it out. And then I started thinking, it feels like a Springer. And why do I say it feels like a Springer? Listen. And I can feel that going through the rifle, very mechanical on it. So I thought, okay, let's rest the rifle out, front and rear rest, and just hold the rifle gently, artillery style with it. And lo and behold, I started getting better groups and then I've run out of time basically because I need to get this rifle back so it will shoot very well and it will group well but you cannot fire this lazy style like you would with a PCP I've tried it and I can't get on with that I actually have to try and treat this like a Springer to shoot it even though it's a PCP I find that with this artillery style, let it rest and then squeeze that trigger and try to squeeze that trigger. Um, and of course, we've already talked about the trigger on it and how difficult it is. But I was disappointed. Now, yes, I could get used to that, but then you've got to combine the weight of the thing. And then you've got to start looking around out there on the market. What else is there? Around that same price point, that's got the features and is easier to shoot and nicer to shoot and I'm sorry to say but this is not a rifle that I would personally want it's a nice beautiful rifle it's beautiful to have in a collection it looks gorgeous it's packed full of features but no no I, I wouldn't recommend this I'm sorry I wouldn't I unless you just want one because you like them and you think they're great or you want a challenge or Obviously, if you're a better shot than me and you can get used to that, that's great. But for me, this is just my own personal view, and I'm sure I'm going to get slated down below in the comments, but 
I just can't get on with this at all. It's too heavy. The trigger is bloody awful on it. Um, I've tried adjusting it always and I just can't get it. The magazine system chews your pellets if you've not got them loaded precisely right into that magazine. This thing has got a recoil on it which means you can't shoot it like a PCB. You've got to shoot it like a Springer. And unlike a Springer, it's bloody heavy as well. So you struggle to hold this thing right and balance it all right. Like I said, the only way that I could get consistent shots was to literally have the whole rifle suspended on cushions front and back and barely hold that rifle and check my breathing and squeeze that trigger, get past that trigger thing. I started getting used to the trigger at that stage, but that's the only way I could get consistent groupings with it, which is a shame because it is a beautiful, beautiful rifle packed full of features for a decent price point, but it's just for me missing the mark so um, hopefully I'm not gonna get too many hate comments from the diehard hats and guys out there um, as always like or dislike this video up to you guys um, comments down below please please keep them civil I know I'm being controversial on this rifle but you know me what's on all you know a lot of people I've seen reviews on this rifle and they don't even talk about the weight of it so I'm not sponsored I don't care who I upset um, I want you guys that if you're thinking about buying a decent rifle, then at least you've got some proper warts and all reviews so that you can make your own mind up. And by all means, combine it with all the other traditional videos out there. Don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, likes, thumbs down. And if you'd like to help me and the channel out, um, please feel free to look in the video description. There's a donation link down there. And um, it will be much appreciated and it will all be ploughed back into the channel to give you some more great content. Uh, catch you next time on the next review. Thank you. Goodbye.